Street vendors are an integral part of city living and urban economies around the world. In Greater Accra, Ghana, nearly one-third of employed people work in wholesale and retail trade. A great many are informal vendors who work in public spaces. These vendors add vibrancy to the city and give residents easy access to a wide range of affordable goods and services. For example, Anas works six days a week in Accra's Makala Market, selling charcoal. Like many traders, he took over the business from his parents, who migrated to Accra from northern Ghana. Enoch studied business in university. He now sells shoes by the roadside. His strategic location allows him to serve customers on their way to and from a popular mall. This work supports his four children. Despite their contributions to the city, vendors like Anas and Enoch are often characterized as nuisances. Here, a vendor is asking an official for her confiscated goods back. Vendors regularly face seizure of their goods, harassment, and arrest by city officials. The Accra Municipal Assembly, or the AMA, also conducts eviction drives, deploying special task force officials to remove vendors and demolish their stalls. They refer to these as decongestion exercises. In January 2018, such evictions displaced a large number of vendors across the city, like Sirwa. In response to the January evictions, the Global Action Research Advocacy Network, WIGO, together with the Informal Hawkers and Vendors Association of Ghana, organized a policy dialogue. Fifty-five vendors from five markets, as well as local and national officials, attended. Today, it's not just about putting blames, it's about looking for answers, long-lasting answers, to solve this age-old issue of evictions and access to public space. The dialogue was an opportunity for stakeholders to share their grievances and their visions for change. It was also a chance for street vendors to dispel common myths about their work. We are doing our best, but in the sense of eviction, our policy makers normally don't include us. They take their decisions, and the few things we are hearing is, we are coming to chase you from where you are selling. And when we move ahead to find out, where are you chasing us to? That one is a big question mark. So what should government do? Should government look on for all the streets to be used for vending? Should government look on for every corner to be for traders? From in time immemorial up to now, every government will do decongestions, but still they are not succeeding. Uh, one, solutions I will suggest is one, government have to look at the unemployment situation in Ghana. In as much as we believe that there should be street vending, we equally disagree with those who are vending or trading on the ceremonial streets and with proper regulation and education, proper education and policies, everything will solve. The need for safe, accessible space for pedestrians was one issue that was highlighted. In 2015, the municipality introduced a red line on sidewalks to ensure space for pedestrians to pass. They subsequently introduced a yellow line that further reduced vending space. 
And as much as we know that is not good, there must also be a, a, a clear uh, way of solving the issues by finding some alternative means for these people that are being evicted. Since we know that their livelihoods depends on what they do achieve at the end of the day when they sell to uh, the uh, pedestrians that come by, their, by them. The complex issue of taxes, tolls, and fees was also discussed. Most of you too, as has been said already, are not even paying taxes. Civil servants and those who pay taxes, they pay so much. And government cannot use the little resources that it has for something that can be prevented. We pay taxes. And for the taxes, they come in their various chains. Some of us still keep our receipts. We have everything, especially Ghana, we call it Lampo. outside they say, I'm not a company, so I'm not a company. It's not a bad idea. Take it. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's not a Makala Mall was constructed on the site of a farmer truck parking lot where many vendors used to work. Displaced vendors were told by authorities that there would be room for them in the new space. However, once the mall opened, the price of rent was prohibitively expensive for vendors. As of February 2018, many of the stalls remained unoccupied. In the meantime, vendors carry on their business in whatever space they can. Throughout the dialogue, both vendors and officials expressed a desire for clear policies established through meaningful consultation between stakeholders. We are not educated about the laws. We don't sell here. We sell here. Traders are not aware of the, the, those laws. So that's what we are saying. We need the education. Come to the people. Let's dialogue. We want to work in a participatory manner. But we, if without executives, Without leadership, it's very difficult to work in that participatory approach. The dialogue also allowed vendors to clear up a major misunderstanding regarding their systems of representation. Sir, AMA, AMA meetings, Venus on the market, yeah. A bar, yeah, 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 TV. It's your commercial, gender ministry, more than one of them. Sir, markets, no, 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 from all the discussions that we've had this afternoon, I put down some few suggestions and solutions and what the way forward should be. I, like Aunt Lydia said, if we don't introduce ourselves to the AME, they will continue what, dealing with the traditional groups they know. And so I'm taking it here and promising that we will be writing to the AME to um, introduce the groups that we have so that they will so that they will also be invited when such policies by, uh, uh, by laws and uh, fixing of whatever programs are being organized, they are at least asked to bring one or two members because they are prepared to work with the AME. They are prepared, they are prepared to also send the information down there. And I think in the beginning there were a lot of assumptions. There has been a lot of perceptions. You do this, you do that, you don't do this, you don't do that. But really, when they stop the minute to listen, then they realize, oh, I didn't know this. And that's where the shift happened. And for me, if we had any influence, it was that. I want to see IVAC in the near future, where informal workers will be free, will have the free space to operate as a, as a business place or a workplace. It should be a permanent place for them. I want to see um, eviction free in the city. I want to see them having rights to the city. 
where no government, no official will harass them. But we have to do it under a regulation. Even though we want access in the city, we want to operate in the city, we also believe that we have our own part to play. When we get there, we will we'll, we'll, we'll talk about these things.